Would you dare to do this with a full face of makeup? Hi everyone, it's Smitha. Welcome back. A question that I get asked often is how do you keep your makeup off your clothes? How do you prevent those ugly stains from getting on your collars and especially the white shirts? And the answer is in today's tutorial. It's not as complicated as you think. In just a few steps, you can prevent your makeup transfer. To prove it, I'm going to do a full face of full coverage makeup and I'm going to do a hug test with one of my favorite white cotton shirts. And if you know cotton shirts, they absorb everything like a sponge. So I can't wait to show you how it's done. So let's begin. First things first, I would advise you to wear your outfit first with an apron over it. If you want to wear it after makeup, then turn your outfit around, insert it, and then turn it back around. So in case you have any stains, it'll be in the back of the neck. I would strongly suggest to start with a gripping primer, and the one that I'm using today is from Cover FX. One of the main reasons makeup transfers is because it moves. But when you have a gripping primer, it forms a tacky layer, so your makeup sticks onto your skin or adheres to your skin much stronger. So the chances of it moving or transferring is minimized. After applying the primer, I almost like to push it in my skin so it really adheres to my skin. And as you can see, it's pretty sticky. For foundation, I'm going to be using Maybelline Super Stay in Golden. I'm going to dot it on my face and blend it out with this Kabuki brush. And I'm only going to apply it on my face up to my jawline and not my neck. The ideal way to wear base makeup is to apply the foundation on your face to match it up with your neck without applying any foundation on the neck unless you have a lot of discoloration or you want to cover scars on your neck. And when you use a long wearing foundation or a waterproof foundation, it lasts longer and the chances of it moving is also minimized. Something that's overly underrated is blotting your face. All I'm going to do is place a piece of toilet paper on the face and dab it with a foundation brush. You can also use tissue paper or blotting sheets. Those are a little bit more expensive. Toilet paper is the cheapest. Or you can also use a dry sponge and just dab it all over your face. What this is going to do is it's going to absorb some of that excess makeup that is sitting on the outer layer that you actually don't need. And here's the excess makeup that it's removed. It's time to add some dimensions to this flat face. So I'm going to be using a deeper shade of concealer from Colourpop in the shade 200N to contour my face. The purpose of contouring your face is to chisel your face. So I'm going to be using it in the hollows of my cheekbones, in the circumference of my face, as well as to contour my nose. The brush that I'm using is the same Kabuki brush that I use for the foundation. I like to use the same brush for multiple things because there's going to be residue of product left in the brush that's going to mix with whatever i apply next and it's going to give me that seamless blend and then using the milani concealer in the shade 145 which is a good match to my skin tone i'm going to cover up some of those dark circles that are peeking through and i'm also going to use it to spot correct around my mouth and i'm using a concealer brush to quickly blend it out you can also use your finger or a beauty sponge And before the concealer starts to crease, I'm going to set it with a powder. I'm using Bare Minerals today. I'm going to start with around the eyes because that's where I have those fine lines and the concealer tends to settle in the fine lines. So I'm going to set around my eyes first with a small Milani brush. And then with a dry sponge, I'm going to dab the powder all around my face to set it. You don't have to use a dry sponge. You can use a powder puff. You can use a brush, whatever you prefer. This dry sponge was lying right in front of me and that's why I picked it up. But it doesn't matter. You can set your face with anything. Using the Hula Bronzer, I'm going to add a little bit of warmth to my face, especially around the cheekbones as well as in my forehead. Because that's where the sun naturally kisses my face and that's where I want to bring in the warmth. And for blush, I'm going to be using the Gen Nude Blush. This is by Bare Minerals in Strike a Rose. Now, if you feel like you applied something in excess or something's overly pigmented, you can use a dry sponge or a powder puff or even a tissue paper and just dab over it and it should absorb the excess product. 
And for highlighter, I'm going to be using Canary Diamond. This is by Too Faced. This next step is the most important step. You cannot skip this, which is using a setting spray to lock your makeup. And one of the best setting sprays from the drugstore is the L'Oreal Infallible Makeup Extender. I usually cover my eyes while spraying because if it gets in your eyes, it can really irritate. And after spraying, I like to take my dry sponge and kind of spread it across my face so it spreads across evenly. Now, if you don't prefer to spray it directly on your face, you can also spray it on your sponge, a dry sponge, and then dab that over your face. That's pretty much it with the base makeup. Now, how if you want to finish your makeup is completely up to you. I'm going to be stepping out, so I'm going to be doing some light makeup. Starting with my brows, I'm using the Benefit Precisely My Brow in 4.5 to fill in just the sparse areas. If you didn't know, setting sprays are exactly like your hair sprays. The hairspray holds your hair in place and the setting spray holds your makeup in place. And the whole reason somebody even came up with the idea of setting spray is because of hairspray. If you didn't know, in the past, people used hairsprays as setting sprays, especially for television and theater, just so their makeup doesn't move. The problem with that is hairsprays can be very strong and the chemicals used in hairsprays can be really tough on the skin. So somebody came up with something that's more skin friendly, which are makeup setting sprays. I'm not doing much with my eyes. I'm using the Hula bronzer to bronze up the ends just to bring in some warmth and dimension. And I'm also going to be using it in my lower lash line. And then for mascara, I'm going to be using one of my drugstore favorites. This is the Essence Lash Princess. Finishing up with the long lasting liquid lipstick from Ofra and Sobi. Now that we have a full face of makeup, I guarantee you this is not going to transfer with everything that we've done so far. To prove that, I have one of my favorite white cotton shirts. This is such a comfortable shirt and I wear it so often. I've inserted a pillow in it just so I can press it hard on my skin. And as you can see, there's zero makeup transfer, like literally nothing on the white shirt. So let's try it on the other side as well. Again, absolutely no transfer. The white shirt looks as clean as new. There's nothing that got on it, although I had the blush, I had some dimension, I had the foundation, I had everything on my face that can transfer, but it did not for all the steps that we followed. Please thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial and please consider subscribing if you're new here and do check out the description box for all the products that I use today along with links to my social media. I love you guys so much and I will see you soon with a brand new one. Bye guys.